the forehead of your robot. As you may know, the popular show at Dead and Eddie has been running for a long time. However between October 7th and 21st of 2003, episode 34 was accidentally released one week before it was scheduled to. It was also known to some around the office the primary writer had been sick with the flu, and instead of going on to make episode 34, the show was supposed to replay episode 1. At 5 a.m. Eastern, people reported a very disturbing new episode premiering on Cartoon Network, some children were unfortunate enough to see it. Apparently the quality of the episode was mediocre when held to the regular standards. Animation was choppy, sound was constricted and very muffled. Reports of a line running up and down, similar to a crappy VHS tape were received. Scenery was described as overwhelmingly dark and depressing without changing props and other background objects, stormy looking. Characters also behaved oddly. Instead of the normal goofy hijinks inspired personalities, viewers complained they seemed extremely agitated, gratuitously hateful toward each other, and constantly about to begin sobbing after the lines. The protagonist also had a very bad lisp, no one knows why, but he spoke with a sexual tone and that further bothered the viewers. I was one of these viewers. The episode began with Eddie walking down the street with Ed. I noted that Double D was missing. There was an angular shot coming from in front of the two to show them walking toward the viewer. Eddie was wearing the angry look he does when something goes wrong, his eyes were red around the iris. It looked absolutely forlorn and practically dragged behind Eddie, tears in his eyes, which were both lazy and looking in opposite outward directions. Kevin, the series antagonist was riding his bike opposite of the Eds, toward them. The shot became blurry and low moans were heard coming from Eddie before Kevin hit him, which never happened because the screen went to black. The screen then snapped back and Kevin was again headed toward Eddie, the view was so blurry this time all I saw was a green blob headed toward a yellow one. Again, the low moan, only this time it sounded like the microphone was broken and loud static came, greatly overshadowing the moan. A claymation sequence of Double D sleeping in Eddie's bed came up. Honestly it may have just been the abruptness, but I jumped and shivered. Waking up and getting out of bed, he moved oddly around the circular room, the fast pitter-patter of footsteps being the only audio. The steps sounds were very clear as the scene was shown in a bird's eye view of him scampering around the room. There were no visible doors. Double D began screeching, sounded like a fish or cat, as he moved wildly around the cell of a room faster and faster until the screen began blurring again, the purple room's color swallowing an hour inch blur. An extreme close-up of Eddie's front door sat, in absolute silence for a maddeningly long time, at least two minutes of dead silence and a door. Next we see Jimmy and Sarah at a doctor of some sort, probably oral. Jimmy, obstructed in view by a hanging lamp, is crying loudly with Sarah trying to comfort him in an unusually warm fashion. It hurts Sarah, it hurts! Suddenly the door of the room smashed open by a new character, a dentist. His face wasn't shown because he was tall enough to be out of the shot. Sarah was escorted out of the room, Jimmy was shown. His headgear was mangled, the front bent upward, stretching his lip very high tearing proportions. The front of his gums was trickling blood, and teeth were missing. The disturbing part was he had lost both arms and legs beforehand apparently, and sat a paraplegic. I almost cried as I came to the conclusion the others had beaten him up and bent his headgear. The camera stayed on his mangled face for a few seconds, still as a picture, silent as ever. Commercials came on. We are instantly assaulted with a very hairy Ralph in his darkened shed fisting the cow repeatedly. The visual loops and gets blurry again as the scene pans out. Maz is reading a magazine on her couch. The quality is now perfect. Eddie is now alone, without Ed. The quality declines worse than before and he is still walking, the sun now lightening the mood somewhat as he smiles and begins running. The door is shown again and we see through Eddie's eyes as he reaches out and opens it. His house is nice and bright, but a very badly played violin is blaring, the only audio in this scene as he makes his way through the house. Eddie opens the door to his room. Johnny is shown under Naz's couch cushion as he crawls out on all fours in a comedic way and pops up behind her, still oblivious. I laughed because someone forgot to draw his eyes and I thought of a mole. Suddenly I stopped laughing as he started swallowing her head, still in a cartoonish fashion of course, but this was different. He and she stayed like this until the latter started kicking and struggling. Johnny held her like this until she went limp. A zoom in on his face revealed extremely small, human eyes. 
Double D was laying on Eddie's floor, no longer in claymation. The camera showed Eddie's house for the remainder of the episode, about three minutes, and the next program began on the spot, 